there's no Mexican food. Yeah. I don't know what's going on too. I didn't feel on it. Caesar salad is from Tijuana. What's yeah. up? Caesar salad is from Guys Tijuana. and gals, all right, this is the conspiracy tour. All right, we're almost, we're almost to that part, so. so you're just going to walk with us for a few minutes. All right. Um, yes, yeah, here we go. So we're well, on. Let me flip the camera. How do we do this? <laughs> up, here we go. All right. All right, so we're, 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 we're on Caesar salad. Yeah, we're on Caesar salad. Yeah, we're on Caesar salad. Yeah, we're on Caesar salad. He's a little premature. Right. So we're not quite to the area where it, it happens. Not all, we're not just, often. But. We're here <laughs> in downtown. <laughs> Porsche is freezing and wet. It is cold and wet out here. So of course they come on the like one night it's like cold and raining in Los Angeles, right? So we're here in downtown Los Angeles on Spring Street. We just had yummy food and drinks at Bar Allah. It was now, it was freaking awesome. It was really good. <laughs> and now I'm gonna take them on a little like conspiracy tour through my old hood. Um, we're kind of in the belly of the beast here in downtown Los Angeles. We're on Spring Street. We're approaching um, Fifth, and I used to live here. Um, and this was during the period of time that I lived here that I like really became aware of what was going on with myself. Like I knew about all the mind control and conspiracy shit and stuff before that, but I didn't recognize like my own position or role and whatever was happening until I lived here. When you like fucking wake up and find yourself in the middle of it it's kind of scary are we going shit. too fast sweetie oh i'm fine okay it's kind of scary especially like when you're in a place as kind of weird and creepy as downtown la is and so yeah so we're we're approaching fifth street in spring and for those of you who has everybody seen um uh, we're gonna get the Eagle right now what's the fucking one? Oh my god they live they live the movie they oh live. they live yeah right okay so the very, we're, we're about a half a block away now from the apartment building I used to live in. I lived at this apartment building called Lots at the security building. Okay. And the very, for some odd reason, the very first night that I ever lived there, I watched the movie They Live. I'd never seen it before. And I'm watching the movie and I'm fucking realizing, I'm watching the scene where they're fighting because he wants him to put on the glasses so he can see. And he doesn't want to put on the glasses, and they're like scuffling with each other in the alley. And is, is I that, fucking realized that it's the alley of the apartment building I just fucking moved into. Is it really? Are we going there? We're, we're about to go. Oh, oh nice. The apartment building, right? So, we're, right across the street over there is the last bookstore, which is my favorite bookstore. You can find anything you might ever need to know. Like, if the world ends, that's where you want to be. There's great books there. Okay. Yeah. So, that place is cool. Uh, Alexandria Hotel is there. Rosslyn Hotel is there. These are all like. Very historical hotels in Los Angeles that are now apartments. And there's a bunch of weird shit here. And they're right there, up there, KKKRKK, KQ, like the first like radio building in Los Angeles, like where all the radio stations used to come from. So, okay, so here we are. We're gonna, we're gonna walk up here to Lost the Security <laughs> Building. She's good at this. <laughs> I showed them when we were on the way to the restaurant. The parking garage I used to park in, and the alley that was between there and this building is the alley that was from the movie. I'm not going to go back there right now because it's cold and wet, and there'll be like Creepy. bums pissing and yeah. shit back there. Um, but this is like you're at post office, and when you come up here, we're at Lofts at Security Building, and these these are lofts or apartments that used to be bank vaults. I lived in a bank vault. You know, we went to a rave at a bank vault. Yeah. It was an old bank. They cleared it out. There was the. There's vault. one of those up there. We'll talk about that up there. Ah. Okay, so I lived in here. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself. I lived on the 11th floor. Um, and uh, the... So we're, I'm watching that movie the first night I move in, and I realize, oh my god, that's the fucking alley. And in the movie, if you guys remember, there's radio signals being broadcast that are keeping people looking like people even though they're not. Well, right there is the building they were being broadcast from. That's the first radio building in Los Angeles. That's like where a lot of frequencies generate from. But also, this building. Is oh, I remember, remember at the, the end movie, of, of, of right, they live. They had that big the, satellite. Right in the movie. Okay. The world is being controlled. Okay. The move. The, the the world is being controlled from an underground base that's under that, uh, from an area underground. Right. Right. Well, that's underneath my fucking apartment building. <laughs> and what it is is that the when downtown Los Angeles was first built. There was a lot of theaters and banks and stuff down there here. People didn't so much live here, so they had these bank vaults 
And every night they'd take all the money from the proceeds and they'd wheel them through these tunnels and store them here in the bank vaults through these underground tunnels. And in the movie, that's where the world was being controlled from. So I found myself living in an apartment on the 11th floor of a building that the world in that movie was being controlled from. And we all understand that that movie is a documentary, not a fucking fiction movie. Right? Wow. Right. right? So the first, this is the first night I lived there. I stayed living here for two years and had a ton of weird experiences. And towards the end, I was completely realizing that I was essentially living above the base that I was being doing so something was happening to me from. I had so many strange experiences. Like I would wake up, like I, like you know, I would wake up and it would be earlier than it had been before I went to sleep. Like I would have all these strange time distortions. I used to, for like a, a good period of time when I lived down here, I felt like I had this ball like rolling around in my head. All sorts of weird stuff, but. It is bizarre that it happened at this building. So let's proceed over here. So was this building in the movie too? This is the building that they were controlling the, uh, the underneath the oh, basement. Oh, so this is of the actual building. building. Yeah, the basement oh. of the apartment building. There's an art center here in the loft. Sort of my apartment, the see, security building right there. The security building is where they used to store the money from all the theaters and the banks in the basement. Oh, right? they, okay. They so they used this movie in the building. They come gotcha. up through the basement because the tunnels from the tunnels come from all over. Remember the underground tunnels that the underground civilizations live under, right? Live from. They come from here, and they would store them in these vaults in that building. And the, the, vault, the bank vaults were turned into lofts. Oh, uh, interesting. Unsuspecting mind control victims like myself <laughs> to end up living in when they think they're being a cool downtown hipster, right? So. I had I lived here for two years. I had beyond strange experiences. I, I, I couldn't even really verbalize to you guys in any way that made sense, but you guys watch Chris and Cherie and some of you watch me, so you probably have some idea of what I'm talking Aww. about. <laughs> so yeah. So but I mean I think if, if it's remember the guy who played uh, Rod, Roddy Piper in that movie before he died he said that They Live was a documentary not a fiction story that's right. what they say but there's a lot of memes on Facebook sure yeah. there's, there's memes of yeah. but we all, we all understand I agree with but you. I agree with you though that, that, there's uh, crossover that, between fiction and reality and they yeah. want us to think the things that they say are fiction or fiction the, 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 the things they're presenting as fiction are actually real and the shit that they say is real is actually the fiction right 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 yeah you know, so like everything is an inversion and whatever. So right. that's interesting. So now we're walking further down Spring Street, and we're coming up to Sixth here, the Sixth Street. And I had like the weirdest interaction one time. Like a couple of it's months really starting. To rain. Yeah, it's really starting to rain. We can duck under here. Like, let's yeah. start ducking here. So we're getting wet for you guys. When I lived downtown, I, I, I used to go to a lot of the parties I go to were down here. They still are, but I don't live down here anymore. There's a cute cat. Yeah. She's so good for the chihuahua. She's a good one. She knows we're going to run outside. She's going to pee. Oh, there's another chihuahua. It's like that, right? Oh, it's a chihuahua. Okay. So cute. So. When I, when, one night when I was living down here, me and my friend Jason, who I often go to parties with, we went to a party down in a different district of Los, in downtown that we'll go to in a little bit. But we were we parked the car, we were going to the party, and we were literally like chased down the street by some kind of like we thought it was a person, but then when we looked at it, there was like no the feet weren't touching the ground, and she was like making all these weird noises and following us, and it was really scary. So we kind of ran down the street to the party. Well, then a few months later, I was on the corner of. Sixth in spring with my mom, and we're walking, and this woman asks my mom for money, yeah. and it's the same woman. Oh, weird! And I was like, we walked past. My mom says no. We walked past, and I told her what happened, and we turned around, and the woman was gone. There was like no woman there. So there's like this. I, my dad, my dad worked at a college in East LA, and he said that they were familiar with this same sort of apparition or ghost there, and he had a name for her, and I can't remember what it is, but literally she used to hang out on this corner that we're about to approach. It's kind of raining pretty hard. So I wanted to explain that before we were out there so poor Cherie doesn't get away. Oh. <laughs> I'm fine. Cherie, she, right. she hijacked my jacket. Okay. Oh, so, what was that? Oh. Brace. Oh. Yeah. I thought, we can keep going. I thought that was okay. a dog. So okay. let's keep going. All right. Are you guys cool for like, we're walking around one more block? Oh, for yeah, the I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Because otherwise we could cut it, but it's going to be harder to do in the car. All this right. is my favorite coffee place when I live down here, Spring for Coffee. It's awesome. 
They have the best coffee. They really do. I love I love spring for coffee. Um, okay, so this is the corner where we saw this like apparition lady, and it was really weird. My mom doesn't know anything about any of this shit, and she's like, "What the fuck?" Right? Like, the woman just asked me for money. I turned around to give it to her, and she wasn't there anymore. Okay, so we're gonna cross here. Hey, can you slow down just a little bit? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. So you were just talking about that you went to a rave at a place that was like a bank and they had totally cleared it out? Yeah. Okay, so there's this place where we walk up to here. It's like a huge nightclub here now. It's called the Stock Exchange. And back in the rave days, I used to go to raves here. Uh -huh. And there used to be... Um, this is like where the Wall Street of Los Angeles was and there used to be like a stock exchange here. Right? All the girls are they're gonna get in line to go in the stock exchange. Uh, right? And they think they're just going to a party, but they're really going to like a, some weird ritual that is you know. <laughs> So they're going up here. Right here. It's a stock exchange. And I used to go to raves there. And it's interesting, that's where they used to have like when there was a financial transaction center in Los Angeles, like Wall Street, it was here. So I find it really interesting that they would also choose to have raves or a nightclub there. Because are we working with the same kind of dark black magic energy, right? Right? So like bizarre. We used to go to raves there and you could still see like the screens on the wall where they watch the fucking stock market all day. Right. That's interesting. I wonder why. The Sonic building. By the way. See, I want. Los Angeles Stock Exchange. So yeah, so like, you know, that makes. If you look at that building, it's obviously built by Masons. It's got like a lot of impressive architecture. All the buildings downtown do. Like, um, Los Angeles is a total sacred geometry city. Like, masonry is, like, king here, for sure. Um, but, yeah, so we used to go to raves there, and you could see, like, still the things on the wall from where they used to track the, you know, the, the, the stock market flood, you know, all right. the back and all that kind of shit. So, okay. So, yeah, so that's there. We're, I just brought that up because you talked about the raves at the bank. So that's a common theme, raves at the bank, and I think it's probably because they're working some of the same same energies uh -huh. want, like, remember what I told you about my friend saying how if you want people to come to a certain place because there's an energetic okay. property uh -huh. to it you make a party there and then the people will come right, right. so that's interesting yeah well, you know one of the, that was one of the first parties I went to was the one at the bank yeah did you ever go to a party to roller skating rink yeah those are big too because the roller skating rink was part of where they took us for training and programming I went to a, a couple of parties at the Funplex Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's in Houston. Yeah, yeah. So Chris and I had figured out that we went to parties together. I used to think, what a weird place to throw a rave. Careful here. Oh, my God. This is going to be fun, and I'm going to do it. So this place is called the Reserve, like the Federal Reserve. Uh -huh. This place here. Oh, nice. The Reserve. So, okay. So, yeah, they have... It's interesting the kinds of places that they choose to have parties in. Alright. So now stepping away from the parties for a second, back to what we were talking about before. So I moved out of the I moved out of the apartment building in the January of 2013. And when I moved, I felt like I was trying to get away from something. I felt like I was in danger if I stayed there. So I chose to move back my childhood bedroom at my dad's house back in 2013 to get away from it and whatever you know I was having a lot of other issues and problems because I was starting to sort of become aware of what was going on with me but I moved out and about two weeks after I moved out I was still friends with someone who lived in the next building over uh, and I would come down and visit her and about two or three weeks after I moved out there was a tuberculosis outbreak down here on Skid Row. Oh, and is this Skid Row? No, this is, yeah. Skid Row is further down. Yes. Is it really? Further down. Yeah. Okay. But much further down. We might, yeah. So, there was this... So you're going to take us on the tour of Skid Row, too? No, I'm not going to take <laughs> Okay, good. We can pass it on the way to, we can pass it on the, way to the party, but... Well, I mean, let's go to... Skid Row is like going into another dimension. I'm let's go to Crenshaw and Compton while we're at it. Oh, look at that. So, um, I moved out, so there was this tuberculosis outbreak, and my friend was telling me that. He was like, yeah, we all have to get tuberculosis tests. Uh, Look, the matrix is breaking down. Yeah. 
because there is something funny with the there's tuberculosis outbreak down here and there's something funny with the water and i was like well glad i'm glad i just fucking got out of here in time so she told me that story you okay sweetie uh-huh all right and then that same week we get the story of this girl named elisa lamb who went came here to los angeles on vacation and went missing and when they the people who were staying at the hotel she was staying at they started talking about that the water smelled funny and the water tasted funny it tasted sweet so they went up and looked at the hot water heater on top of the hotel and they found this girl, Elisa Lamb. Oh, I remember that. In the, in the fucking, fucking, in the fucking in the hot fucking water heater. Water heater. So and nobody are, knows nobody knows how that happened. Nobody knows how she got it, but you can watch videotapes of her in the elevator at the hotel. We're walking up to this hotel right now. This is the hotel. The hotel Cecil. Oh, oh shit. Right? <laughs> so she's in there, and nobody knows how she got there, but you can see, go. you guys can still go and look on YouTube and see videos of Elisa Lamb in the elevator, and she's clearly responding to something that doesn't appear to be there. She clearly right. thinks there's something. It's them. actually terrifying to yeah. watch. Yeah, it is. And I, so, I, I, I tried to analyze that video. So she is, um, yeah, so she was in the hot water heater. This is the hotel? This is the hotel. It's now called Stay on Main. If you, if you look at the hotel, the Cecil. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Right here. So the Cecil Hotel, and this is what's weird about it. About a year before, my friend James Martinez had asked me to hear Hotel Cecil, right here. Okay? Oh, wow. When I told him where I lived, he's like, do you live in the French Hotel? And I didn't know what he was talking about. Should we go in? Yeah. Oh, is it closed? Yeah. Yeah, it's closed. Oh, they closed it off on top of that. That's yeah. even creepier. So, yeah. Right? Notice, okay. Oh, notice the filming. It's been open for a long time after that. Oh, they're going to film a TV drama. Yeah. You film shit every Right. Okay. Simulated so this is Hotel Cecil. But some of you probably, maybe some of you who listen are familiar with James Martinez. He used to have a great show called Cash Flow that was, that was sort of about money, but really not, really about other stuff. But he, he told me, he's like, Here, do you live in the French hotel? And I was like, I don't think so. I was like, I guess the building I live in could have some French elements, but no, I lived over there. But he was concerned that I lived here because what he told me, and this was a year before this happened, he said that place is the center of everything. So the girl who died, who was in the, ho the hot water heater, her name is Elisa Lamb. The, the, when that happened, it created a tuberculosis outbreak. Or I, I don't know if it created it, but it was at the same exact time. Oh, wow. And the test for tuberculosis is called Lamb Elisa. Oh, uh, that's weird. Right? That is weird. So what is going on here? But when I heard about this, look, I was equally relieved and terrified because... There's something magnetic about this hotel. That well, whenever, I felt it as soon as we walked up. Whenever I felt this energy. Out, when I lived here, because I used to go to this restaurant here. We can walk down here. It's, it's like a jaggedy. This area. restaurant and market I used to go to down here. I used to always want to walk by this, but not because I liked it, but like you can't help but think there's a weird energy here, right? And so that was like, James somehow knew something about this hotel. And when she died, I was like, Remember I told you that when I moved away, I felt like I was chasing, getting away from something? Uh -huh. Like, there's a part of me that feels like if I hadn't moved away and I did, I might have been the one. Not oh. her. I don't know if, the, I can't say that for sure or whatever, but I was running away from something when I left here. And then when that happened, I was like, woo! I Crazy, escaped it. Huh? I escaped it. But what I found out afterwards is that Alistair Crowley used to live in that hotel. Uh-huh. Oh. Richard Ramirez lived in that hotel when oh he was fucking god. doing his Night Stalker killing stuff. No right? shit. Oh yeah. my god. Seriously? And that hotel, people have been since the beginning, uh, for, for, for the past hundred years, jumping, like, committing suicide jumping in that down. hotel. So there's something there. There's something, there, there, like, there's, see, a hotel, there, there, there's something there that is, according to what James told me when he thought I was living in a French hotel, some kind of vortex that is causing all of the problems. Here in this realm, right, is there coming from that hotel? Coming from that hotel. Well, you know what's funny is that that's what uh, Ghostbusters was based on. It was all coming from York, that one like, yeah. in New York yeah. from that one hotel building. Yeah. Well, it wasn't a hotel; it was a uh, condo. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when I got away from here, like I was relieved. I felt like I had escaped something, and then this happened afterwards. The other thing that's weird about this hotel is there has been movies made about this hotel before. That happened, and the exact thing that happened happened in those movies. There's a, movie, a Japanese uh -huh. movie called Dark Water, 
And what? there's there's another French movie from a long time ago called. You okay? Because. Because there's a big uh, like if there's a yeah, big trucks pull pull into there oh. like stuff like that. But most, but but it looks like it's been here a long time. They could be warning yeah. of a different kind of danger, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that's there's shit like this all over that's downtown. Where the, that's where it yeah. begins. <laughs> so, like I I kind of felt like. Um, so okay, so there's this Japanese movie called enough. Dark Waters uh-huh. that is about the exact same thing—a person going to the Hotel Cecil and dying in the same way she did. And then there was a French movie many, many years ago called. You get in front of me. That was also about that. And the movie in French was called Mal Sali. Uh huh. And if you spell, if you rearrange the letters in Mal Sali, it says Evil Asylum. Oh, interesting. So this is the market that I used, I used to come here. There's a market that had like great food and all the candy that I was addicted to, but also gourmet food uh-huh. and cocktails here. And I used to come here, and whenever I would come here, I couldn't help it. I like, wanted to walk over there. To that hotel. Yeah, and a lot of people who used to come here from out of town to go to parties, to go to raves, they would stay there because it was inexpensive. So a lot of people who were also going to parties were staying in that hotel. So anyway, so yeah, so that was here. There's also like a really cool restaurant and bar down there that I used to hang out in. The restaurant's called Cole's. It's like a French dip sandwich place. Uh-huh. There's a bar, a, a speakeasy in there called Varnish, where they shoot that to show the, um, the Boardwalk Empire. Right. Okay, we're right here. Oh, here. Yeah, so that, that's kind of like the creepy block. I, like, all this stuff happened on this block that I lived in. Weird. You know what I mean? And I didn't know any of this when I moved down here. Oh, really? Even while I, you know, you know, like the thing that that happened right when I left. And I, I, I'm just thankful that I left when I did because I, like, what was calling her to that hotel and why was she up? What, what, like, you, literally, she walked up there for some reason. Well, why? that's a creepy. Yeah, she it's was so around, creepy there. Isn't she it? walked around the cafeteria. Yep. And uh-huh. then she went upstairs. She went all the way to the top. She yep. ran out of the stairs like somebody was was chasing her and then she's in the elevator like looking yeah, out like peeking remember she was like right. peeking around the corner and shit like that yeah so I, I always just felt like I can't tell you I, I was in a really crazy spot in my life then so I never said anything to anybody then but I was super happy glad that that wasn't me because yeah. I was having weird like I would have this weird sh- when I lived in the building security building here where the fucking world was being controlled from I would have this weird shit where like I'd be in my apartment like listening to information but sometimes I would even be listening to you guys right uh-huh. or like Alex Jones back in the day or fucking Coast to Coast back in the day or whatever the fuck I went Randy or whatever I was listening I used to listen to Randy before I was on the show with him and I would like listen to a podcast and I'd hit pause on the computer when I would like go out in the hallway to go to the laundry room or to go to the trash thing or to go down and get my mail but for some reason in this building even though I'd hit paused even though I'd hit pause Huh? Are you okay? Yeah, that's yeah. good. Even though I hit this way, even though I this way, even though I hit pause, I could still hear that guy, it. That guy was that trying guy's to snap checking my phone. Us off. Really? Is he good? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. All right. So, everything cool? Yeah, everything's good. I'm trying to figure out how to flip the camera. I don't know where I'm at. You know how to flip the camera? Oh, mm-hmm. there we go. There he is. It's just because it's wet. It's not doing it when you push it. All right. Okay. There we go. So. Did you see that? Yeah. You don't know how. You don't know how close we got. Okay. okay. I was just talking. Oh no no! Him. I was I was watching. I was yeah, about was to punch that motherfucker in the face. Yeah, he was gonna. Okay. Yeah. So I was just talking. All of you guys are not paying. Yeah, me. Chris knows. Okay. So when <laughs> I would live in that building, I would like listen to stuff, and I would stop the podcast when I would go. I hit pause. I think he saw me put my fist up like that. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he's like, oh shit. So he just pretended he was looking at the sign? Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, so our car's over here, but let's finish the story. And we can actually get in the car to finish the no, story. I saw so it happen in one. my mind. I grabbed his arm. Let's get in the car and then we can finish the story. Okay. All right. So we can get warm because the coach is freezing. It's not that I'm freezing. It's You're wet. Like my yeah. toe is yeah, just yeah. throbbing. It's because it's cold. Yeah. So once again, for everybody just joining us, we are live in the middle of the L.A thunderstorm this is the flooding event of the century that's taking place here continue this conversation while we drive okay so 
we'll just sit here for a few minutes. All right. Yeah. So. That was freaking awesome, Emily. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so let me finish it now. Okay. So when I was in this building, living in this building, and I've never had this happen to me anywhere before, anywhere since. There's something weird about this area in this building. I would hit pause on the computer or on my phone or wherever I was listening to anything. And I'd leave it, and I'd go to the laundry room or go to the trash chute, because there was like a trash chute in the hall, because I lived on the 11th floor. Or sometimes I'd go down to the stairs and get the mail. Well, I could still hear it in my ear. I could hear what was happening. Like, like, so I would push pause, but I could hear as if the conversation was going on. And then when I would go back to my apartment and hit play again, exactly what I had already heard in my ear would be what would be, was said. So I hadn't listened to it yet, but I was already he hearing it. So there was like some kind of strange frequency or I don't know what the fuck was going on oh, wow. but like I would be out of my apartment the thing was in my apartment I had stopped it and I could still hear it playing and if you pay attention to like what and this sounds so stupid and I feel like I'm mixing reality with fiction but I just can only report what happened that sort of you know the whole point of they live is that the whatever was controlling reality and making people think that these things that were non-human entities were actually human it was happening because of frequencies that were being emitted from a building that was right across the street from where I was living was there some kind of frequency like what was going on like there's nothing more right. disturbing than hearing Alex Jones when you're not even listening to him you know, I, well, <laughs> you know I've, I, I, I've had the same shit happen to me though where I'll hear music out of my fillings out right. of the fillings in my mouth yeah yeah, uh -huh. so, country music. I don't even fucking listen to yeah. country. Yeah, he hates country. Music. Yeah, so this like, the, the only one, the only time it ever happened was when I was living in this building, and I, you know, I was having a lot of, I was engaged in a lot of destructive behaviors, and I was having a lot of other weird things go on, but that only ever happened there. And as soon right. as I moved out, it never happened again. So there is something funny about this area, you know, right. like th this is like. And, and the fact that that, you know, was she getting voice to skull technology that told her, is it voice to skull? Was she getting voice to skull that told her to go to the fucking roof and drown herself? And because there was no, ever well, in that video, she looked like she was running, running from, from something. something. Well, did you see her in the, when she was like, in the she elevator. comes out of the elevator, looks both ways. But you saw, she was like peeking around the side and then hopping yeah. back in the elevator like this. Like those people who don't know what I'm talking about, go Google or you search on YouTube, Elisa Lamb in the elevator at Hotel Cecil, mm -hmm. and you will see she is clearly responding to something that doesn't appear to be there. And so is there voice to skull technology? I and mean, there's a lot of homeless people around here. Right. There's a lot of um, drug use, obviously, on the streets around here. There's uh, maybe I'll, on the way to the party, we'll, I'll see, maybe we'll pass on, um, on uh, Skid Row. Like, this is a great place to experiment with voice to skull technology, and people will just think, oh, well, that freaking person's crazy. Right. And she, this is a girl who's traveled here from Vancouver on her spring break or on her some winter break or something, and she's probably just looking for a place that's affordable. And they, that's a way you can fool people. Like, literally, like, what if that hotel is, I mean, like, is some kind of strange black magic place where all the shit works better than it does everywhere else, and she just... I mean, whatever happened, she doesn't have any history of anything weird. It doesn't look like there was anyone there who did anything to her. Like, literally, what if there was a voice being beamed into her head, voice to skull technology, mm -hmm. that told her to go up and do this? You know what I mean? Wow. That's the only thing I can think of. And think, now, I'm a, you know, I think one of the things that always saved me is that I had this awareness because I was doing research about all this stuff. I can't imagine the world of trouble I'd have found myself in with some things if I hadn't, and I, that's what, if I hadn't been aware of all this stuff. That's why I'm so concerned about all these people who go to parties and aren't aware of the shit you and I are aware of because, like, I, like, I just can't, can you imagine? Like, I, I, I can't imagine living in the world the way it is and not knowing the things we know and being able right. to, to survive in any kind of healthy way. Right, because without being able to be aware of it, you can't I mean, we could fight go, it. We could go down, I guarantee you, if we went out here right now and asked 100 people if they knew what V2K was or Voices Skull, mm -hmm. nobody, maybe, there might be one person. Yeah, maybe two. One person yeah. or two people. And so, you know, it, 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 you know, it's very bizarre. So... That's the main part of the downtown conspiracy tour here. That um, was freaking awesome. <laughs> Hope everybody awesome. Yeah, that was that. that was one hell of a surprise. I didn't expect that. <laughs> right? And I knew, I remember you guys were one of the only, you guys were one of the only people that talked about the Alyssa Lamb thing. I heard you guys talk about it, and you talked about it a little bit after, like, a, it was maybe like six or eight weeks after it happened, but you guys were talking about it, and mm -hmm. no one else did, and I couldn't believe that other people didn't pick up 
on it. And you know what's really crazy? You can find this in her book, and it's a little bit different, but I asked her about it, and she does think that it is related. My friend Elisa E., who wrote the books uh, um, Our Life Beyond MK Ultras 1 and 2, which, guys, everybody should read it. It's super disturbing, but, like, there's a lot of interesting stuff in there that you won't find anywhere else. She talks about something called Elisa programming. Oh, yeah. Elisa programming. Elisa programming, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, she, 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 I don't know. Her, her story, to me, it's the, of all the people that have told, reported their MKUltra experiences, it's the one that has just reached in and grabbed me and been like, what's scary is how many similarities there are to certain things I've experienced, but also just like that this, all these things happened to this person and this person is still alive and fought through it and is speaking about it and doing what helpful things for the world is amazing. So guys go check out her work and support her cause she's really cool. Um, but yeah, the, she talks about Elisa programming and I asked her if she ever thought there was a connection and she's like, I, I think what I remember her saying was like, I don't, it's not exactly the same, but she, when, when it came up, she knew that there was something, that there was something with that. So the girl's name was Elisa Lamb. The test for TB, which was, there was a TB outbreak the same week that she was found, is Lamb Elisa. And there is MK Ultra programming called Elisa programming. So wow. there we go. And I'm very sure that Voice to Skull is practiced. Like this is a hub for it here in downtown Los Angeles. So here we are. Wouldn't I wouldn't doubt cool. it one bit. I'm looking at the Elisa Lamb video yeah, right now. Yeah. Yeah. And you see in the beginning, she starts look she looks afraid at first she she looks like she's hearing something out there yep it looks like she hears something maybe calling her name or something you know what's and crazy she, is that hallway actually even looks almost exactly like the hallway in the apartment building that i lived that i that i lived in so she looks and checks to see if somebody's there because she hears a noise and then she gets scared by it is hiding and she's hiding from it Maybe her, she heard something violent or scary. And she's peeking. And she's peeking. This doesn't look like a crazy person. Either. No, it doesn't look like a crazy yep. person. It looks like a person that's being look, messed she's with. very carefully tiptoeing into the hallway. She steps back. Almost in a geometric pattern. Yeah. Like she thinks she can avoid whatever she's hearing or seeing. Right. If she just gets at the right angle. That's how downtown is. That's creepy. Like, you feel like there's certain energy coming at you from one way. If you can kind of get out of that path, you're okay. Yeah. It's very strange. And so if you, if there's not much that happens until she, she gets back in the elevator. And she's like trying to touch all the buttons because it seems like she wants the door to close. And it won't close. And it won't close. And she's freaking out. Why won't it close? Why won't yep. it close? She wants to go down. She wants to go down. Probably in the stairwell is where whatever it was got her. So whatever she thinks is there, she thinks so. No, oh, there she goes. Look, watch, watch this with her hands. It's like she's talking to somebody. She's like moving her hands around, all weird. I really wish there was some kind of audio to this. So, and then that's, that's it. That's it. She disappears. And then she completely disappears. And the disappears. hot water heater is, she went out th around there to the left. Uh -huh. You go out, to, like, she went out to a door onto the roof. And then you have to climb into the hot water heater. And there's like a space and she was, her body, like, it's like a tank on top of the hotel thing. But guys, go watch. There was movies made fictional movies where mm -hmm. a girl dies in the hot water heater on top oh, of the hotel creepily, Cecil. A few seconds later, the door shuts. After she's done with all this, After it finally she's done shuts. with all this. Look at that. The door dude. shuts. Yeah. And then it opens again to an empty hallway. It's so crazy. It's really... But, like, I mean, think about what I was saying about hearing things in my head when I, you know what I mean? There, well, I'm, it never happened when I, like, I would never hear things when I was in my own apartment. Is that a different floor or the same floor? No, that's the, the same, same floor. floor. It didn't go anywhere. It didn't even go anywhere. I would never hear anything in my own apartment or when I was out on the street or when I was, like, in the lobby of the, of the, um, apartment building. I would only ever hear it in, like, the laundry room, in the hallways, in the stairwell, in the trash mm -hmm. chute. 
You know what I mean? Like it was very, all these buildings here also, and you can see the floor there is marble floor. All of these buildings are granite and marble. They're all right. thick stone buildings, thick stone which buildings. you would think would block frequencies unless uh -huh. the frequency is coming from inside. Well, unle or unless, well, yeah, the frequencies would need to be coming inside and they would be amplified. Amplified. If they were like the Egyptian temples. Yeah. And yes. Oh, places like yeah. that, that resonate shit. energy. And that's what it is. It's like, we, you felt the energy as we passed by that hotel. Oh, yeah. These buildings are thick stone buildings. Like, this is not some, like, little crappy shit that was built in the 90s and that, you know, like, whatever. These are these have been here for 100 years. You know what I mean? And they're thick and they're built by masons and the geometry of the buildings is incredible. So they're, they echo sound in a certain kind of way. Well, yeah, Masonic buildings are all about... They all have um, really high ceilings. ...sacred geometry yeah. and the way that things resonate, sound yes. resonates within them. The sacred geometry of space, time, and sound. Like, I've talked about that in relation to the music, but, like, that is in relation to, like, what we're talking about here, too. Um, I don't agree with some of his work, but, like, the... Andrew Bartzis talks about sacred geometry cities and that, that we're living in these sacred geometry cities and that's part of how we're being controlled. Mm -hmm. I mean, and if you look at Los Angeles from up above, it looks very, very interesting. Um, there's tons of Masonic buildings, especially down here. Um, it's very, it's laid out in a very, so his idea was that like the way that, if I remember correctly, I haven't listened to him in a really long time, but you can probably just Google Andrew Bartzis on sacred geometry cities. Um, the way traffic flows in and out of cities, like the way that, like vessels come in and out, and then just the di the way the cities are diagrammed and the buildings are, it's basically like creating energy flows like in and out in a certain right. way. Mm -hmm. that, that's yeah. what I'm picking up as you're talking. Yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah. what the purpose is. But, you know, here's another thing to consider. You know, it's called the city, the city of angels. Right. Why is it the city totally. of angels? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who are the angels? Yeah. Like, are we, it, am I a fallen angel? Like, I've asked myself that question before. Well, what's going on underground? Right, so underground here. Like, is it here, the city of angels underground? So if you go and look, you can find, you can probably find it online. If you go back to the 40s, there's like, in the newspaper that would be the equivalent of what is now the Los Angeles Times, they're talking about civilizations that lived under the ground here, like, and reference to possibly them being some sort of reptilian kinds of civilizations. Oh, you know what? I heard about that. And that they found some kind of reptilian city under, underneath they or something. They talk about it as being the Vril Society. Uh-huh. Vril, yep. if you listen to some people, including the aforementioned, who we were talking about earlier, Donald Marshall, who, again, mostly batshit, but the information is the information's good, but the presentation is in a batshit way. Um, the the Vrail has some stuff to do with a lot of these like underground bases and cloning centers and things like that. Um, and the Vrail were related to some issues with Nazis and telepathy and psych the psychic, the psychic uh, awareness of, of some of the people who were involved with some of that kind of stuff. Um, but one of the things people were surprised about when they started building a subway system in Los Angeles was how quickly they were able to do it. And the reason that they were able to do it was because all the ground was already hollowed out underneath because there was already all of these tunnels. So oh, shit. I think that, so, and one of the things that I was telling you guys this earlier, like I've been to parties where like I've seen people emerge through holes in the wall in like coming from, see, there's probably a reason they call them underground parties too, right? Like, you know, so I just, I, I've often wondered if it's like an opportunity for like, there's civilization, there's something living underneath the ground in Los Angeles. Like there's tunnels. I was telling them, you guys back there about like the, how they used to transport the money from different buildings through there. You know, like, what if, like, all these civilizations that people think of as, like, alien or off-world are just, like... Are actually underground. underground. Yeah, I, I, th I theorize that the I also, grays are underground. Yeah, and I also... Or that they come from another plane right outside of the ice wall if you look at the flat earth kind of yeah, model. So yeah. they don't have to come from the star systems no, millions of miles also, away. Also, what about civilizations that we think are, have been, like, lost or, like, wiped out? What if they just went in, d d underground? And so the further underground you go, the older you find civilizations. And the closer you get to the Earth, you might find the oldest civilizations. Right. Right? Living there. Oh, right? Yeah. I also, like, wonder if, like, um, like dinosaurs mm -hmm. escape. Remember those that program from, well, you might be too young. But there was a program Journey called Land of the, the Lost. Land of the Lost. We just and watched they Land of the Lost. And like, they would be, like, yeah. in these caves and underground and stuff like that. And I was telling this. On, 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 with a show we haven't put it out yet but an interview we did with somebody that like when I, whenever I drive 
on the way to Palm Springs. Like, there's this area there, if any of you guys ever saw Pee Wee's Big Adventure, where he, uh-huh. like, goes to the dinosaur that says, like, yeah, eat. The- mm-hmm. I swear to God, every time I drive by it, my head, <coughs> my, my inner intuition, and you guys, we've had a lot of conversations tonight off camera that you guys have experienced, like, my weird thoughts about uh-huh. things. Uh-huh. I swear to God, that dinosaur is there as a symbol that there's an entrance to there to the underground where the dinosaurs still live. Like, whenever I drive by there, I can... I, I just feel stupid even saying this because it sounds so stupid. But, like, every intuition I have is that there are... That, like, there is, like, um, Jurassic Park underground well, there. Know, I, I feel that, too. Uh, there yeah. have been many... In Journey to the Center of the Earth, yeah, The Lost World. Yeah. Um, something. Land of the Lost. World Beyond the Poles. Yeah. All yeah. Edadorpa, all that kind uh-huh. of stuff. You know what I mean? This is all... I, I, like, I think... Think about this. NASA, the government, all this shit has everybody focused on space. Right. And they have everybody like look. It's misdirection. Look, look out, outward. Look, look out, outward. Don't look in. in. We right. don't know anything about the center of the Earth. Right. We don't know. We can't get any more than right. eight don't, miles. But it's the same as everything else. Like instead of looking inside yourself, they have us looking outside of ourselves for answers. Mm-hmm. Even with shit like all of this transgender agenda crap, and I talk about this sometimes. So those of you who watch our show have probably heard me say this. But, like, they're getting people to make alterations to the outside of their body instead of coming to terms with what's on the inside of them. And balancing the, the feminine and The most high spiritual inside, yeah. point you can have is almost like an inner androgyny. Right. Which is completely different than cutting off parts of your body and yes. doing all this stuff and whatever. Mm-hmm. And if they can, they know that in this time people are starting to return to, like, a certain state. And if they can get people to confuse that for an outer thing mm-hmm. and make it uh, an SJW war about, like... What bathroom we're gonna go with? Yes. Food? Like people have been figuring out. Well, they did that like, with feminism too. Totally, feminism exactly. and the divine feminine. Yes. Uh, you know they make make women believe that it's about feminism instead of divine feminine energy. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So every every you know what if what if space is water? What if the ocean is more like space than whatever they have us thinking out there? What if? Well, that's the flat Earth model that right. we're inside a ball, or, yeah. in, or actually a dome in, or, uh, underneath an ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, what if space is water? What if the only way out is in? Mm-hmm. Right. That either that being like the way that you leave this plane is by going into the Earth, or the way that you leave this plane is going so deep inside of yourself that you're able to escape, like the Matrix kind of thing. Right. Like there is no. I love that book, uh, Inner Paths to Outer Space. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, your friends, Rick Strassman and Mitch have stuff others, in there. Yeah. John, uh, John J. Harper's in there. Um, mm-hmm. is, uh, uh, Jeremy Narby. Um, there's lots of interesting people with stuff in there. But um, yeah, that is the whole. Anything that's distracting you to like what's going on in the. I mean, obviously, you have to pay attention on a certain level to what's going on in the world. But there's only information out there. Answers are only on the inside. There are no answers out there. There's right. only information out there. Right. Yeah, answers are all inside. So, so let me ask you this because, I, you know, as you're talking about underground cities and all this, I'm thinking about the movie Blade. I've and never seen it. You've never seen Blade? Uh-uh. Oh, my God. I haven't seen a lot of movies. It's this whole underground party scene where there are basically freaking vampires. She's never seen Blade? No. Wow. Yeah, that's it, what it is. That, that, yeah. That's what, and, yeah. And, and, I mean, they're basically vampires. We're going lure, there tonight. They lure all these people <laughs> underground to feed on them. Right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Oh, shit. You need to... Oh. Also, wow. if you watch... So, remember what I was telling you at dinner? And we can go into this on the show another time about the parties and the cloning centers. But remember what I was telling you about the parties in the cloning centers. I, I was telling my friend Elisa about that one time, and she s- said, "Oh well, I wrote this article for some for Pat, Ron Patton's magazine. Mm-hmm. I forget what it's called again. Paranoia, I think is what it's called. Uh-huh. Chris Everard does stuff with him, I think. Yeah, right? yeah. So, and she showed me the article, and the article is about the TV show um, Orphan Black. Mm-hmm. And in Orphan Black, they have this like sort of like goth rave club that they go to, and underneath it is where they're fucking running the cloning operation from. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And wow. on the de- they have a screen, and on the desk there's like the sacred geometry figures and all mm-hmm. this kind of shit that like I've talked about. And yeah, so the, you guys ever seen that show Orphan Black? That's a great show. Or- Orphan Black? I've never is, seen it. No. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good show too, like with this whole cloning Okay, we'll watch and... that if you watch Blade. Okay. All right. Yeah. Deal. Yeah. Deal. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to turn the thing on to defrost the windows All and right. see what we're doing next. And cool. maybe we'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. All right. <laughs> this has been freaking awesome. Love you guys. We'll see you soon. Love you guys. Bye.